What's up, everybody? I'm Kevin. And I'm Sergey. And, and we are the, the Tabletop, Tabletop Warlords. Lords. And once again, we're playing a game of Beyond the Gates of Antares, the best war game there ever was. Today, we will be playing one of the match scenarios, one of our favorites, really, in number four, Hold, Hold the, the nine. nine! It's so fun. I love attack, defend. It's a great scenario. And the cool thing is, is that we have both recently finished quite a few models. So we are going to be playing the forces revolving around what we just got done. It's going to be 500 points today, and I'm going to be playing a really interesting faction, the Gar Exiles. It's a sub-faction of the Gar Empire, and I feel like it's somewhat underplayed, but really, really cool. Gar Exiles are actually a very cool fa faction, and it, I love the Gar for that fact, is that the Space Goblin Armored Suit combo is really cool, and you get three different kinds of ways. Exactly. Play. This flavor has a little bit more focus on the battle suits, and also a couple interesting ways they can field Gar outcasts. All of this can be found in the Drone Scourge 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 <laughs> Scourge uh, supplement, uh, which is a really cool rule. There's actually been a lot of questions on the Intel if the Drone Scourge is worth it, and it has it has quite a bit of content in it. It's hands down my favorite of the supplements. And I think for the first time ever, I will be fighting with the ancestral enemies of the Gar uh, in the form of the Algren Prospery. Uh, I have just finished uh, quite a few assault troops and a defiant transport, and I really want to get them on the field. Hobby-wise, this is an interesting report because I've actually done a complete conversion. There is no shell talk model, so I kind of made one of my own, and Kevin did a really great job painting these over it. There's a lot of contrast in them. Well, I appreciate that. Just do not look at my original AI squads. They are, <laughs> they are the first paint job, and whew, we've gotten a lot better. They're pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Scenario number four, hold the line, is a basic scenario. We've done it many times before. Sergey, as the defender, has to defend three points on his side of the field. He controls those points, even if his initial defenders move away from them, or if he doesn't even have an initial defender starting in the point. Uh, and if I can flip at least one of them, it is a draw. I have to flip more than one of them if I want to win. Uh, and that's pretty much it. It's a pretty basic scenario. In order to loosen my foothold a little bit, at the beginning of the game, Kevin will have a sonic attack. Huzzah. He will get to roll a dice, and it, depending on a chart, it'll do different horrible things to my guys. It's usually actually really useful. I hope I roll a 10. We'll get these beautiful models out so you can show them to you, as well as a nice battlefield. But before we do that, if you like this channel and you want to support it in the simplest way, you should like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comments below to tell us what you think. If you want to support the channel even further, go ahead and hit the affiliate link right beneath this video. It'll bring you to the Warlords store, and anything you purchase there will give us, the Tabletop Warlords, a small commission. If you want to support the channel in the best possible way, please consider joining our Patreon campaign. Even a dollar pledge goes a long way in helping us produce these awesome videos, and we really appreciate it. This is my 500 point Gar Exiles Force featuring Shaltok himself. As such, I have named this force Shaltok's Entourage. In any 500 point scouting force, you must have three tactical choices. You may have up to six. You must have one support choice. You may have up to two. You may have zero strategic choices, and you may have up to one auxiliary choice. Gar Exiles have a couple of extra caveats when you're making their force. At least one unit of armored exiles of any type must be taken. For each non-command tactical armor unit taken, an unarmored tactical unit must be taken. And if you want to use Shaltok Sheep, you must have any one of their special characters. Killing two birds with one stone, I've taken Shaltok himself. He has 160 points base, but I've spent 36 points to give him a loader scope. He counts as my armored unit and also unlocks Shaltok Sheep. Speaking of Shaltok Sheep, I have taken one squad of them. They are 49 points base, but I have spent 35 points to give them a bomber cannon as well, making them 84 points total. The next unit I have taken is an outcast squad. They're 42 points base, but I have spent 25 points to give them a disruptor cannon. My support choices are filled out by an awesome unit, the Scudder Squad. They're 95 points base, but I've spent 30 points to give them all amps, so they're technically mod 2. My final unit that I've taken is my ubiquitous Tectorists. They're the best auxiliary choice in the entire world, and they're only 20 points. That left me with 5 points left over, so I took the army option block, making this entire army 497 points, represented by 5 to 7 order nine. And here is my 500-point Algorand Scouting Force. I am calling this scouting force the 
Algren mechanized units. Then any 500 point scouting force of the Algren, you have to have three tactical choices, but you can have up to four. You can have up to a single support choice, zero strategic, and up to a single auxiliary choice. In this particular Algren force, to fill out my tactical choices, I have started with two AI squads. They are 94 points base, and uh, I have taken the free upgrade to have an extra Micro X launcher because you would be a crazy not to. And uh, I haven't spent any points on them other than that. So just two naked AI squads. The third tactical choice is my brand new, just finished uh, AI assault squad. I love these guys. They are my new favorite models in the entire range uh, because they are a blast to paint. Uh, once again, it is a naked unit. So it's 120 points base and I have not spent anything to upgrade them except for the sizable upgrade they receive in my support choice, my also brand new, just finished Defiant Transport Skimmer. Uh, this bad boy is 106 points base, but I have given it a 24 point upgrade as a, uh, in a hyper light uh, booster armor. It means that instead of res 11, it is now res 12. Uh, I've also given it a mag cannon, which is a 30 point upgrade. And that little guy off to the left there is a uh, spotter drone for 10 more points. You can see that they have uh, borrowed one from the Concord. I, I apologize. I cannot make, <laughs> they cannot get the drones done to save my life. And then the last choice to fill out the list is a auxiliary choice of targeter probes on order from the free war. Uh, it is uh, 20 points and uh, I have no points left to have uh, any army options like Sergei, and that means that the entire force is 498 points, and it is represented by two, three, four, five, six order dice. Here's our battlefield for today. Uh, we played this scenario several times, so you folks should be pretty familiar with it by now. You have to have that uh, opening in the center, no man's land, for uh, my poor Algorin to try to get across. And then Sergei, as the defender, gets to place three pieces of terrain on his side, three pieces of terrain on my side, and those are his choice. So uh, it's it's kind of brutal, but at the same time, it makes sense. I'm, I'm assaulting the position. Now, I did have the option of placing more pieces of terrain along my table edge, but in all honesty, it's just, it's just completely pointless for me because I don't have any weapons teams or anything like that. So it's a pretty sparse board. So you can see Sergey has selected a uh, building. Um, it does not really say this in the scenarios, but we always find it fun to have a building. You're, you're, you're assaulting things. So something to assault. It's gonna give his troops inside uh, plus three to the rest. It is uh, only accessible via a run order. And it is a uh, minus one to hit to anybody who's in there from uh, any attacker. So it's kind of neat. And then uh, it obviously blocks on the side as well. He has chosen two uh, industrial zones. These will allow large models to move through them, but they are difficult terrain, minus one to your agility, and they provide plus two to your res and are considered dense terrain. So you cannot see through either of these spots. Now you'll see a lot of roads. Uh, those are just edge pieces. We wanted to make it look cool. They're actually not accounting for anything this game. And then on the outer inside, there are three instances of light woodlands. It's a light area terrain, minus, or I'm sorry, difficult, no minuses to your agility and plus two to your res. Pretty simple stuff. Now, as far as deployment, uh, the attackers show up on turn one, so no Algorin are present on this field, but Sergei has deployed on his. Absolutely. I have put my Tectoris as far forward as humanly possible along the battle line. Yes. Uh, they can deploy anywhere on my half of the field, so I figured may as well. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, there's no cover, so they might get pink mist if you know. For the rest of my units, I've uh, decided to take up a very defensive position behind this building, leaving the rest of my flank fairly bare, so I'm a little nervous about that. But Kevin has a mag cannon, and I just really don't want him to get mag cannon. I don't yes. want it. I don't want to see it. So you have shell talk behind the building. Shell talk and shell talk sheep inside, and then half of the the other half of the attacking force is actually arriving on turn one as well. So that is our deployment in battlefield for today. Before the battle starts proper, I must have a sonic preparatory bombardment. First, I will test on shell talk sheep. Boop. Five means that this unit takes a single pin. Unacceptable! And then Chow Talk, which is behind the building that you can't see. Nine! Oh no. That means he takes D3 pins and goes down. Oh! Ooh, so two pins and is down. And now for the unassuming Tectrists. Five. So normally it'd be a pin, but they can't yep. take pins, so nothing happens. <laughs> Thank you.
Going into turn one, the Owls are going to have a commanding six order dice. Uh, and the Exiles are unfortunately already on the down foot, having lost one order dice to Shatox down from the Sonic attack. So they are going to be bringing four order dice to the field at turn one. Let's see how it goes. Turn one, dice one. For Alvor. For my first order dice, I will bring out my targeter probes. They look like they're lining up, like it's going to be West Side Story with the Tetris versus the probes. Oh my god. <laughs> Again, Algorin. The Algorin push has arrived. It is an advance order with an AI squad. My final position uh, right here. I basically, I'm going to use the, the woodland for a blocking terrain for just like a little bit, but I definitely have to be moving quick. So with my fire order, I am going to fire everything that was within range at his Shoutok sheep in the building. So everything I have shooting at the uh, Shoutok sheep in the building is extreme range. So I have two mag guns and two micro X launchers firing regular ammunition. It's gonna be ones to hit all across the board, but overhead is of course always first. So in this case, since hitting the building hits them, I'm going to basically aim it at like the center, most the unit that is the most central of the, in the building. So I'll do the gun itself. And like I said, I can only hit one. So sorry, I can't hit the, or see the dice, but it doesn't matter. Oh, I got a 10, so absolutely misses. Good shot. And then, whoop, I have a second one, same spot, eight misses. Now I have to deviate the full 10 inches because I have um, uh, advanced and I rolled 10, so it's way off. Like I said, both mag guns are only on ones. Oh my God, I did it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> so I will obviously uh, shoot at um, it doesn't, I can't aim, like the gunner itself wouldn't stop the gun, correct? You can shoot at the gun, but the gun is res like 12 or 11. Yeah, so we're not going to do that. I will just shoot at a non-leader, killing hopefully one of your random dudes. So you have plus three res for the building. So I'm at sevens. And minus one. So you have uh, sixes. So you're fine, but you do get another pen. Darn your witty goblin, Sergey. Drat! <laughs> Don't have any good targets, so I'm just gonna move my Tectorus. That's smart. Always move your Tectorus first. I'm gonna scuttle my little goblin asses right behind all of this light terrain, at least forcing him to have like a reroll, or not a reroll, minus two uh, accuracy if he shoots me. And he gets me a very large swath of land covered by my Tector rods. Gar! I'm going to be running onto the field with an outcast squad. I'm gonna place them safely in the bosom of this dense terrain. Makes sense. Final position, this big old blob of goblins. Giant unit, good god. Give me that Algorand dice, you know it's gonna be me. <sighs> Aha! Algorand. Yeah, I figured as much. And yet more Algorand pour onto the field. I'm gonna basically mirror the same order. So they're gonna come out here with an advance order and they're gonna be firing everything they got up at those Shoutok sheep in the building. This is going to be the exact same deal before as before. So I, I am aiming at the largest unit in there. I'm only hitting on ones. I miss. I deviate a full D10 inches, which is four inches this time, which uh, may or may not. I honestly don't, I don't know. know. Let's see, because as long as it hits the building. On the side, it's kind of hard to tell. Hell yes. The second overhead shot. I miss on a nine, and I deviate nine inches. So That's nothing that time. Definitely. So uh, one out of the four, I will take it. The Micro X Launcher causes a D3 strike value zero hits, and it's three today, Sergey. All right, my armor's only four. Is there, there's no strike value on it, is there? No, strike value zero. Okay. So you don't get the benefits of the building like you said. Yep, so just fours. Hey, oh, one two die. That's like, honestly, not that bad for I guess. But I'm all about it. Now I do have two regular mag guns that will hit on one. So let's see if my guys have good accuracy once more. Nope, not this time. But you do receive one more pin and two casualties, I will take it. I, I have to say the Gar is one of the most fun opponents to play because you, you get to pink miss your little units. <laughs> <It's> terrible. <laughs> and it is Gar again. I'm going to perform a recovery order with my Shaltok sheep. Using Shaltok's leadership, they're at nines. I'm good, and they remove three oh, pins. Cool. Statistically speaking, it should be. Oh. Well then, I don't <laughs> want it. <laughs> I don't know where Kevin's transport's gonna come in, so I'm going to spread myself like a fine aioli across the battlefield. I'm going to come on with my scutters right behind here, and uh, hopefully they're strong enough to hold it. Final position. With all the guard on, it is now 
Three to the Algren. Whoa! My defiant transport is thundering on the field with not one, nay, two run orders. Whoa. Putting it basically almost halfway up the field. Then since it did run, it's maneuvering so extremely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna basically do a recovery order with the Algren Assault Troops in the center current because I can't get out. We, we forgot to put the distortion dice in. Forgive us this one time. Me and Sergey have both agreed that the next dice pulled in round two will be the first to be distorted. Turn two. Fire all the amps. It's Ooh. amp time. That means it's six V six. And the distortion dice hovers over for whoever gets pulled first. Turn two, die one. The distortion die. Ooh. Ah! Me. Uh, I am going to use my block here. Yeah, that Locking makes sense. myself. I do not want to go down. I already have somebody down. What is it? It is me. Oh, thank God. I shall direct the distorting energies towards this AI unit. It is in the back. Um, and it's still turn two, so we'll we'll, we'll I'll, I'll accept that. Makes sense. Next dice. Algorithm. I don't know if I want this dice or not. We're gonna find out what I do. I'm gonna continue Tokyo drifting with an advance order down the way with my defiant transport so it's going five inches up and then it's going to be shooting its mag uh, uh, mag cannon over at this regular squad of outcasts i am at accuracy six it is a long range so i'm at minus one so i'm at five to hit with a reroll from a spotter drone whoa <laughs> lucky yeah. so uh i would like to hit your distortion cannon because i have strike value five and it is strike value or, uh, res 10 correct so the weapon team gun never has its res modified no matter what your strike value is. So it's always rolling on tens. Kevin, I'm assuming is going to modify his decision with that information. That is some Tom Hoolery. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll just thank Mr. Leader then. So I'm strike value five, so he can only pass on a one. Oh yeah! my God, I knew you were gonna do Woo! it. Woo! <laughs> Algorithm. <laughs> that was the worst sound effect ever. <laughs> I am continuing to screech down the field five inches more. And uh, I'm gonna, once again, the, the problem is that Sergey got this amazing angle, so I still can't see the majority of these guys through this uh, industrial zone. So once again, I'm just going to shoot at the uh, regular outcast. Legit. All right. Okay. I will try to murder your damn leader again, because he was real cocky. Okay, good. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> you were the same twice. He's like, I am Krugnar, the barrel chested. <laughs> So the leader gets dead. Well, Krug is dead. He's just pretty much a pair of shins now. <laughs> what will the guard do now? I don't know. Probably go down again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to form an advance order with these guys here. Uh, I do have to do an agility test, yes. even though I'm kind of sidewinding here. Well, I failed that test, so I cannot actually enter this piece of terrain Oof. nor see through it. So, But I mean, a... you're still avoiding the Brutal Shark, which is my Defiance Mag Cannon. That's true. Gah! All right. Moving my Tectoris. He's yeah. doing a run order. He's going to run as far as he can, close to this unit. That makes and sense. they're all just going to be shifting as much as they can over. Yep. You only need one to have the coverage, correct? Oh yeah, absolutely. Brutal. Ha! Gar again. Hmm. I'm once again going to attempt to do an advance order here. I need a four. Yes. You got it. So I'm just going to literally just place the tip of my nose in there okay. and uh, fire at your transport. We forgot to hit record! It was a flurry storm of fire! Sergei Scudders fired nine shots, dispersed shots, hitting on only a mere four, but he struck me four times, rerolled one from his Tectris, striking me a fifth. Using one of his luckies, he destroyed my buddy drone as a despicable villain he is. But none of the shots made it through, and I received one pen. It's going to be very awkward when the Concord come to return to, to get back their buddy drone. They're gonna be like, Spot, Spot, where are you? Next, dice out of the bag. Once again, Gar. Hmm. I'm going to do a firing order with my weapons Ooh, team. I'm wait. going to be shooting Kevin's non-downed unit way over yonder. I've got 60 range, so I'm definitely at extreme. Uh, so I'm hitting on, let's see, sixes. Down to fours, down to twos. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Nope. Tectors reroll though. Yeah. Yes. Son of a dude, I knew. Woo! Hell. Algren. All right, bubble. 
I will move my target probes thusly. These two are almost exactly 20 inches away from the building. So they are gonna go over here and attach themselves to the building. This is important. They are not attaching themselves to the, uh, uh, the whatever. Now make sure they're an inch apart. So they're not actually attached to the uh, outcast, but it works because they're attached to the building. These two targeter probes are going to move their maximum of 20 inches towards these scudders. So basically, boop and boop. I'll run again, and I'm going to use it to make a fire order at uh, the uh, dudes up in the building because they've already gone. And I have plus two to hit them now because of the targeter probes. I first, first pass on a command test of six and two. I got it. So I only lose one pin, however, unfortunately. So now. I'm going to fire with uh, two micro X launchers. It is plus two or minus two to the deviation of the shot, but then plus one to the deviation. So overall, the shots are going to only uh, deviate one inch less. And then I have uh, two mag guns, which are going to receive a plus two to hit from the targeters, but they receive a minus one for the pin and minus one for the building. So it kind of nullifies it out. And they're extreme range as right. well. And the intervening, yes. So only hitting on once. Aiming once again at a central unit, um, and uh, it's only hitting on ones, so four, so it misses. But now it's gonna deviate a D5 minus two inches, but a plus one inch, so minus one inch. So it is literally- Definitely a hit, yep. yep. And second then the one. second one only hits on a one. I got a five, so it's a miss. So I'm gonna deviate again. And a 10, so it's five inches minus four, one so inch, four, four inches. inches. Uh, this way, yeah. So it's still gonna hit the Definitely building. Definitely gonna hit. Yep. Fours. Oh. One's dead, one's alive. One lived though. So it's another pin, or what, one pin and one dead. God. Gonna attempt to do something with channel time. Mm. Hi, Commander, I'm going down and eating dirt. I can't see him. There we are. Passing my command on an eight. Whoo, thank God. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna do it right away. Shell talk has shuffled. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get close to the action because he is useless where he is. Yes. Gar again! All right, I'm gonna do a recovery order with my outcasts. Looking for sevens. Yep. I can't roll less than a one, so. Truth. With the last order dice in turn two, I am going to be ballsy because there's a good chance that I'm going to have more order dice come turn three. So instead of hiding in my protective shell, my uh, assault troops are going to advance out and shoot at these scudders that now have their nose out. And I'm gonna hope, hope, hope I do well. The assault squad are all armed with the brutal mag repeater, giving each of them two shots at strike value zero. Now I do receive a minus one penalty for rapid fire, but that is all. Wow! Oh! Oh, rough. Oh, that was awful. That was awful shooting. Holy God. One hit. One hit. Take it on my leader. We're good. He's good. But I said, give you a pen. Yeah. <laughs> the algorithm only have one down order due to the distortion dice. And I got a four, so I'm back. I must test for my burnout. I'm good. Moving on over here. Oh. I'm bad. Damn it. Damn it. That's so bad. He also has a down order. Oh yeah, he's good. Okay. Going into turn three, the Gar still have six dice despite Shaltok's own plasma amp burning out. The Algren still commands six order dice and the distortion dice is going back into the bag this round. It's a stressful turn, turn three. This is where the, the magic happens. Algren! I must use this lucky initiative to engage the enemy by, I'm gonna do a run and a sprint, cause I'm gonna, I mean, I would be so stupid to try to get through here. So I'm gonna sprint so I can go around it and I'm gonna charge him. So uh, I'm gonna do my sprint check, which is fine, five. So I'm gonna be in close combat with my ancestral enemies. Oh. Kevin has caught me on the back foot with a pin, so I'm going to fire disperse shots. I'm hitting on threes. Three. And then I will obviously be doing the mag repeaters I said, so each one of my guys gets two shots, and then it's at uh, accuracy four. Four out! Ooh, this is a lot better this yeah. time. <laughs> Holy crap, That's dude, so I only good. missed once! So uh, I have 
three luckies. I, I really don't think it matters, though. I, I don't think it matters. Well, yeah, no. It's, no, it's really going to be too many hits. So yeah. I'll put these off to the side. So that is a total of... So I hit once before, and I missed once this time. <laughs> that is just the most extremes of luck. All but. right, so I am hitting on threes, but I do have to re-roll. You can re-roll one because you have a Tectris. So those two uh, I don't think the Tectris is close enough, is it? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to measure that real quick. He was not close enough. Yeah, so threes again. Yes! Oh, jeez. Oh, God almighty. Okay, so we got to figure out this. I'm going to replace these dice. Well, All red. So you have three up. dudes. So each one has to take three, but it is strike value zero. So you literally only fail on rolls of 10. So it's still going to be a big old nothing. First guy. Nothing. Good. Second guy. Nothing. Good. Third guy. Roll two tenths. Damn. Good. Okay. But, but that, it, I get a pin, pin, and that's the important thing. Yeah. This is what one might call a sticky wicket. <laughs> I have strength one and only three strikes. Kevin, on the other hand, has... <laughs> D-spinners, which I do have to um, say what they're going to be. Obviously, I'm not going to bother about getting two res, so I will uh, amp up my um, plasma grenade launchers. So now uh, I get two attacks. They are strike value two, and they compound like grenades. Hitting on ones. <laughs> Champion. Damn, where was that roll when it was your res? <laughs> okay, so um, I have to once again get 10 dice, so because it's two per person. I have charge and I have hand weapons. And my strike is a default of six, uh, five, so I have sevens to hit. So those, oh, so I roll four tens. So that is all. So I only caused five hits. So only uh, two people are gonna have to take a strike value four hit. Strike value four. Fails. Good. Passes. Strike value four. Dead. Strike value two. Good. Good. So nice. I get a pin, and I'm just going to roll the leadership test right now. My leadership is eight down to five. Hey! You're whoa! Dead. You the pin. <laughs> Is that that's the sound of guard in distress? Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, and I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, I, I think I'm gonna continue fighting. Really? You wanna do a Fallout combat? Mm -hmm. I'd like to negotiate terms of not doing one. <laughs> You're dead. So uh, <laughs> I get the same dice, you get one last attack. Nobody puts Gar Baby in a corner. One! No. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you will die! So I rolled a lot better this time. Still pretty bad though. No, that was yeah, that's not seven bad. hits, so. Someone is taking a strike value six hit. Someone is, uh, two people are taking a strike value four hit. Uh, no. Somebody is taking oh. a strike value two <laughs> Yeah. So we'll put the strike value a million hit on the- uh, Normal guy. Yep. So you're saving on twos, he's dead. The other one you're saving on fours. You roll. Woo! Wow, still good. Right, but uh, now you must take another test on five. You failed. I'm gone. All right. I kind of figured that was going to happen. <laughs> I, I honestly was nervous, though. They're, they're hard enough to kill that I was worried that I might not do well, but the D spinners really came through. Yeah, there's the potential for me to just bounce off of me, I guess. From a consolidation move, I will obviously go towards the uh, objective, so I have agility five down to four. Oh! You can't enter, so are you within three inches to spin it? I don't believe so. I have to be. It's of the uh, of the objective in the center. That's what I'm saying, yeah. In the center of the board. Oh yeah, because it's four inches wide. Woo! That's good for me. Okay. Well, at the roll of 10, I'm not going anywhere. So I bunched up against the outside, but now I'm in a real compromised position. Oh, oh no. Yes, I just lost two order dice. This is actually great for me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Compound is doom. Damn it! Yes! Okay. Put that down order on my transport. It's got an extra dice anyways. Next dice out of the bag. Also Algren. I must pass in a seven to do it, but I am going to try to do an advance order with a defiant transport. It can draw a line of sight to the outcast, which I regard as the most dangerous unit right now to my Algren assault troops. I got to get a seven. And of course I roll a oh, ten! no. Oh, Fates man. have changed. This is terrible. That's what I said. I suppose it's better to have bad luck at the beginning of the, board, the game. Now it's Gar. 
I think we all know what I'm gonna do yeah. here. Doing an advance order with my outcast. Bow! Uh, they are at effective range, so they are hitting on fours because the rapid fire, fives for the cannon. Fours and fives. So that's one hit, strike value zero. I'm gonna obviously take that on my leader. And he's good with a seven. So I take a pin. I need to test my lugger gun's limited ammo. And they're good. I'll have a run. I will use this dice to have my targeters uh, switch gears. The two that are attached to the building are gonna stay there and these two are well within 20 inches. So I'm just gonna put one right here and one right here. Gar. All right, moving my Tectris. Shifting my Tectris squad as far towards the important things. Yeah, that makes sense. That I can. Yeah. Oh. Algorin, it's gonna be a sprint. And I might as well go with the one that's uh, not the sure thing and pass on a seven, hopefully. So three, yes, yeah, so I lose this and it, it's gonna be a sprint. So I'm gonna do a further sprint check, which is a 10. So oh, I get no, what is wrong two, with our I get dude. two pins. We're rolling nothing but ones and tens all day. My final unfortunate position, <laughs> I've had two pins. Algorin again, my last dice. And it's another sprint. I gotta get these guys downfield, so I'm gonna move them. Oops, right up. And then I'm gonna do another sprint check. Eight, so I get a pen. <laughs> so it's a uh, rough slogging. And that's my final position. A breast. Two dice for the go. Going to be doing a firing order with my shell talk sheep. Need eights. You got I'm two, good. So you're good. And I'm firing, I can only shoot the long range weapon, so I'm firing all the way down range at Kevin's unit with two pins. Okay, so you're at extreme range. Your accuracy is five. Down to three. Yep. Hitting on threes. Wow. Miss, but a Tector is three roll. Oh, Damn. yeah. Okay, because D5 hits. Ooh. Five hits. Five hits. Strike value one. So it's just one on everyone. Yep. The so sixes. Uh, we should delineate the uh, micro X's. Oh. Well, I failed two and passed two. So well, it's 50-50. So, it's 50. Yeah. so uh, five or lower, it's not a micro X on the first guy. So it, it is a micro is X. a micro X on the second one. Also, so both my micro X's are dead and I receive a pen. I've lost two guys. Now I have three pins and three people. Four pins. Oh, four pins. So. I fail that test and, and I die. No, because you still have 50%. You're just down. Oh, okay, so I have to go down. Brutal! Doing an advance order with Shao Talk himself. He's mm. going to move five inches forward, and because he is large, he can shoot over these guys here. Yep. And, uh. I'm yeah. assuming the auger in an assault squad? Yes, I'm what, going to. What's your range? I don't know yet. I'm going to choose the uh, concentrated shot just on the off chance that I'm not with it. Heard. 30 inches. Oh, well, that was stupid. But oh well, you got a strike value four and eight coming at you. Hitting on fours across the board. So. Re rolling the uh, bomber cannon. Yes. <laughs> Double sevens. But so. you do have a strike value four hit to contend with. So I have a uh, res seven. So I'm only passing on threes. Uh, there's nothing that the special that the leader has. So. Yeah, screw it. I'll try it on the leader. Yeah, that's why I get paid the big bucks. The Algorin's turn to test for down orders, so I'm at uh, uh, fours or lower to get up for these guys. Oh my god, I rolled a one. Oh, of course Thank you, you Rick. Only ones and tens today. Dude. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, so now, but the uh, one that makes me sad is I have two down orders on my Defiant Transport. So it's uh, eight, so the first one is seven. Oh, okay, so I keep that one and lose, don't lose the pin. And I get I uh, fail the second one, so they both it's both down. So the you, tank is out of the game. You literally just rolled a one into a ten into a fail. What the hell? Yeah. We're going into turn four, and due to the down orders for my darn tank, the Algorand have four dice and the Gar have four dice, and the distortion dice is ever present to ruin one of our days. First back turn four, gonna be the Gar. Woo! I'm going to be doing a firing order with this unit here. They're going to shoot at this vulnerable group. I'm going down. Oh, okay. Fives and sixes. Yes! Whiff, you can't even re-roll it. Damn it. And then that Damn, we're rolling with oh, these dudes. Oh, wow, yeah. Okay. And then those two sevens, and now you have to re-roll. Oh, no, you have to re-roll. 
Uh, you have to do this first. You have to do the second. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. So, and then once again, what this is it. That was, that's seven right there. Not have... Oh, sorry. I don't have my glasses on. Uh, yes. So no. three hits. One of them is a lucky, doesn't matter. Who are you shooting? Oh, those guys, yeah. So uh, three shots against my Algorin that are red seven. Strike value zero. Yes, hey. I'm good, but I do take a pin, which I figured as much. Gar! Going to be doing a firing order with my Gar over here, shooting into this one pin unit. Ooh, I'm gonna run to cover. Oh! Well, yeah, well, you would have missed, God I damn missed it. the first one. That's okay, but I'm gonna run to cover. I never pass these, I never pass these, but I'm gonna do it this time, I need a six. I got a nine. Oh! You're kidding me! So, so you get a pin. The first time. Yep, and uh, I do get a Tectorist reroll, so let's see here. Oh, of course. It'll be a D5 hit. Two, Two hits. hits. They are strike value one, and uh, I'm at seven, so I got sixes. So everybody's good. But two pence. But two pence. Darn you! A fire order with my giant Ooh. cannon arm. Will I resist? I'm hitting on fives. One hit, one miss. Two hits. So I get a D5 and a D4, but both of them will be halved because Kevin is down. Two hits total. Yep, all at strike value one. So I'm fine on both ends, but I do take two pins, and that means I have pins equal to number of models. So I must pass on a three, and I do. Ha! So I'm not down. Well, you're already down. All right, but I'm already down. You would have been forced out again, giving you another. Yeah, round. so I'll take that. Now we're going to... Yes. I am going to attempt to run with these guys, but to take the order, they need to pass in a six, and I get an eight, so they don't. Oof. There are only two order dice left in that bag with the distortion dice, so we're going to just pull to see the order, because neither of us really want to do much with our targeters. So what do you got, Sergey? It's the distortion dice. So it lifts both of us. It cannot be targeted on anything that's on the field. Yep, because everything else left can only be given run orders. So yeah, it's Do you want to move your targeters at all? No. I'm going to shift my detectors just a decent bit. Okay. Just a little bit of a shift in this direction. Just absolutely ensuring that everyone is in every, yeah. detectors. <laughs> Good times. So uh, let's get the down orders finished. I'm going to do a horrible on the down orders. Uh, all, all, basically, all of my units are not. So I'm going to see if this one gets up in a seven. So it does, thank God. That one's coming back. Now I have two, once again, on my Defiant. You can see him right there. So first one comes back. Second one's come back because I got eight command. And then last one, I have five pins. So I have three commands. So these guys are probably not going to get up. Yep, they don't. But I do lose a pin. And yeah, they're, they did their part. <laughs> Well, admit it all the turn five. The Algren have five order dice now, and the Gar are still rocking four, and that distortion dice is ever looming. Dice one of turn five is the distortion oh. dice. Oh, great. Well, I have Love one more dice. Is okay. Dominus. And it's me. Yes. So I will obviously just go down with the guys that already have four pins. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Next dice out of the bag. Is of course Gar! Oh god, the dice bag just hates you today, man. Here you go. Fire order with the Shell Talk Sheep. I thought so. Are yep. you shooting my poor Algorin that are only three strong? Yes, I am. So what do you need to hit? That would be a, uh, I'm sixes. Oh wait, I'm gonna react by running. I'm gonna do it again. I gotta roll oh, a six. Give me that dice. Yes! I did it this time, so Woo! Look at you. So I'm sprinting, so I gotta do a sprint check. Oh, great. Well, that's a 10. <laughs> and I'm going to do a uh, agility test, which is a failure as well. So okay. let's see where I go. <laughs> well, Kevin makes it where he wants to go and whiffs my shot, but he gets a lot of pins in the process. God bless America. And it's Gar. This unit will be firing into Kevin's uh, hefty sprinters. Yeah. You are without 20 inches, so you're at long range this time around. Fives and fours. Boop, boop, boop. Damn it. Hey. But four hits. Four hits. I only have three gentlemen left, but my res is now jacked to nine. So I'm going to take two on my leader and two on the other guys. Uh, well, I, I uh, got a lucky, so I can, I've got to force two on your little guys. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, at res nine, so I only fail on tens. 
So the guy who's taking two. Oh, no, that, that doesn't look like that. You would still be able to take two. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Oh, yes, okay. So uh, both my guys pass. Ha <laughs> ha! And my leader passes the first one, and he passes the second one. So I just take all pin, but I do have to now take a test because I don't have, I'm, I'll, I'll, have, I'll be forced down, but I might. Yeah, so I'm forced down. Oh, great. Oh, great. Okay. Well, my tank will release bloody vengeance, hopefully. <laughs> I'm going to go for a wild gambit and actually move these two targeter probes zoop, over to Shaltok because I would rather him be forced to make an advance order than a fire order. Secondly, you could sit right there, but my mag cannon is uh, looking primed to hit you now. It worked! I am advancing now with my tank because I, I have an advantage with the targeters, so I might as well bridge the gap a little bit. And now, Shadhawk is 30, 33 inches away, so I'm getting closer. Um, so I'm at long range. And that means I'm at six down to five, but I get plus two for the target approach, so I'm up to sevens. Hitting on sevens. See, I told you! Oh, oh, so I miss. Please be the outman. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Advance order with Shadow Talk. He's going to just kind of squoach as far as he can up here. He's still gonna be at long range, but he's gonna shoot at Kevin's uh, three man unit. Yep. Damn! Oh, all <laughs> good. So, okay. so it's a D5 and a D4 half. Yay! So, so nothing. zero and, and two. two. So two on the less. So it's a. Uh, wait, is it still strike value one? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I have um, no. Uh, I don't get the bonuses for the cover. Uh, so I'm down to sixes. So I'm good on both regards. But, but two pins? I have to take a test. Oh, I just oh! lost a pin. So you only get one pin. That's Yay! There are only two dice left in the bag, and I am not moving my attack So Kevin has his tank to go. And I will do a fire order against his regular outcast squad. Uh, I have uh, six up to seven, but it's plus two for the uh, targeter probe, so it's a nine to hit. I uh, only fail at a ten, and I don't thank God, so now you must pass a test on just a one. He's dead. Super dead. <laughs> so you lose a normal dude, and uh, you got a ten. Kevin's probe is attached to this fellow, so he's going to take the mag cannon directly to the face. Makes sense. Now this is what is going to decide the match it is the Algren down order. So I only have a leadership of four over here. I roll a three. That's fantastic news. I only have a leadership of three over here. Oh my god, I lose two men! Oh my goodness. Oh please, Rick Priestley. Please! <laughs> and then uh, over here, fours again. Nine. So. The assaults, they tried, man. They tried so hard, but they remained down. That's unfortunate. They did their job, though. Going into turret six. It's just the same. Algren F5 with one on the field. Gar down to four, and the distortion dice is... Oh, God, I hope it doesn't screw me. <laughs> yes! Oh, well, let's see how Kevin rolled, though. Yeah, so it looks like... Second. You know what I'm doing. So I am going to try to do... You have a 50-50. And I, I'm just going to do an advance because I literally only need to move a half an inch, yep, just half an inch. to get it. So I got 50-50. One. Oh! Oh! I, I can see. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's no way for me to win. Um, we... To, uh, tested to see if there was going to be a seventh turn and there's not and it's physically impossible for me to get close enough to get the point so even though i am literally within half an inch reach <laughs> of the damn point i cannot force even a draw so sergey's shout talks champions or whatever the hell he called them win <laughs> The God Terror Machine rained pins upon the whatever. <laughs> Wasn't yeah. even you. I was battling the dice the entire time. <laughs> that was, you rolled. By all rights, oh, it should have made a draw. Sense. By all rights, it should have been a draw. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing with, with any unit. Any So when you're facing Gar, the thing that sucks is that you're always rolling an order test. You're never not going to roll an order test. Yeah, that's true. Really. Because but, they just endlessly but it was that thing about agility test. That agility test was the linchpin of the game. Mm -hmm. If I would have not, if I would have rolled anything one through nine, 
It would have been a draw. You know, but I rolled a 10 and my auger and assault troops just stood in the open and that was literally their doom. Because once they were out in the open, good. they didn't die, but they just couldn't not absorb. Well, and they didn't spend the exact. Which is, that's, that's, what huge that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, yeah, um, the 10. And then I rolled like three tens on trying to get back up. I rolled two tens while sprinting. No, three tens while sprinting. Yeah. And, and I rolled a lot of ones too. This, that, one, this one was- Well, why were that big of a deal for you? Because the, the lucky shots don't matter. Well, it was more that I actually paid contact on like rolls of threes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, th so this was, a, this was a really interesting match statistically. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I really liked playing Dark Exiles. Yeah, they like a lot. They, they produce so, many pins, just yeah. endless pins. Mm -hmm. And the rate, so the thing that like I hate about Gar outcasts is that they only have 30 range on mm -hmm. their cannons. But with the Shelltalk Sheep, they have 60 range on their cannons cool, yeah. and they're almost always gonna be re-rolling because of tactics. Yeah, they're it's really tactics, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's for sure the truth. Uh, and then like, it was so funny because it was like, by the good graces, your faux pas were all because uh, the survey was like literally where he's like, oh, I did dense terrain, oh crap. And then it was like at the end, it was like, yeah, I did terrain. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I thought I absolutely uh, ruined myself. But you still could have, though. I could have. If yeah. I would have got into the terrain, I would have just spent the next turn just walking out of it, and then yeah. it would have been mine. So yeah. it, it, it is a thing. But I would say, generally speaking, I would avoid dense terrain with guard players. Just yeah, if, you, if you're the guard player and you're the defender, you probably don't want to do what I did here. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. especially when you're a shooting army, too. But what I did is exactly what you do in this scenario. Sergey spread out his guys, and I, I, I lightning struck one point, which is what you want to do. Uh, and you definitely want to do it with a melee-oriented unit, because if I would have turned the point, you wouldn't have enough turns to even walk back to do it. So yeah. the it's, assault it's troops, easy crawl. Yeah, the assault troops were great. Yeah, the they, they annihilated my uh, scudders. There was no question <laughs> as to the victor. No, no they're very good. And then um, the last thing I'd say is just uh, it is it is this is a very fun scenario. But I always feel like you're going for the draw on the 500 points. It's that's very, true. very hard to spend both objectives, or two objectives. And so that's why I think uh, the next time we play this scenario, we should definitely do it with a much Oh yeah, player. like a thousand point would be... Or 2,500, because that'd be cool as hell. Yeah. But yeah, 2,500? 2,500? 500? No, I meant 1,250. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, because then because then you have more of like a, a duality of what you have to worry about. And, and these smaller points and the hold the line, like I said, it's like you, you always have that surgical strike. And if you could withstand the surgical strike with, with your guy, put pins all across the board, you can almost guarantee that it's only the, the most positive thing for the attacker is it will be a draw. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you enjoyed watching me get the crap kicked out of me, you should like the video because it's just the easiest way to support our channel. And while you're at it, subscribe. We'd love to have you. And if you uh, want to leave a comment, we would even love it more. But if you want to support this channel even further, go ahead and hit our affiliate link right beneath this video. It'll take you to the Warlord store and anything you purchase will give me and Kevin a small commission. But if you want to support our channel in the best possible way, you should consider joining our Patreon campaign. Even a dollar pledge makes all the difference. Speaking of patrons, we have a brand new tabletop squire, Ross Blythe. Yes! He is hurling lances of fire onto the field. Carrying the lances? The squire. He's hurling them. Not bad. Not He's taking charge. You don't hurl lances. <laughs> you can <laughs> hurl a lance if you're Ross Blythe. He's stronger. <laughs> We also have not one, but two new tabletop men at arms. The first being Mark Taylor, who I've been told is a 18th level black belt. He can punch worlds in half. And our final man at arms is Malev Dashanobi. His beats are sharp as kunai. But in all seriousness, the music that you're listening to right now is actually Malev's music, and he is a great guy. He's been a part of the Atari community about as long as we have, and he's always been one of our fans. So we definitely want to give him a shout out. Now that he's one of our supporters, you should check out the link in the description of this video and go to his YouTube channel, subscribe, and listen to his awesome music. We love it, and I think you guys will too. It's super awesome stuff. Well, I'm gonna crawl back into my shame cave and hope that the dice go better next time. So until then, we will see you on the tabletop. <laughs> Don't you mean your shame caverns of Omega Viridi? No. <laughs> that is not where winners go. <laughs> it's just this little door underneath the stairs. That's where like, I got a Harry Potter dungeon. You just go in there and then they feed me fish heads. <laughs> It's terrible. It's horrible. You don't want to be the loser. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes <I> think. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs>